series on our big fat mouths. Um, it's been a couple weeks. We had camp and everything, so we put it on, on hiatus. Actually, we were waiting for Glenn to get back because we didn't want her to miss the sermon on lying tonight. So, um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Now, we're, we're back. We've got two more. This has been a four-part series. First one was on complaining. All right. What was the second one on? Criticizing. Tonight, we're talking about lying. All right. And next week, we talk about gossip. And that'll be the end of it. But you won't want to miss it. All these messages will eventually be on the website. Um, we put them up on Facebook Live. And then eventually, they come from Facebook. We migrate them over to our website. So if you miss them or if you thought, <laughs> my sister needs to hear the one on lying. You know, so you can point her in that direction. OK? All right. Of all the Ten Commandments, if you think about the Ten Commandments, all right? What are some of the Ten Commandments? Not besides lying. We know what we're talking about tonight, but so, some others. Don't murder. <laughs> don't murder. That's good. If you guys don't know a few of the Ten Commandments, it's like, we're all right. We're starting all over again. So, no. Some more. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't covet. Don't lie. We're talking about, yeah? Don't have no other gods. Before, you know, we think we're doing okay. Most of us haven't killed anyone here. Okay? Although, life's not over yet, you know. <laughs> you, know we, you know, we've been, you know, adultery. Like, I haven't robbed anyone. I haven't stolen anyone. I haven't committed adultery. Lying is the one. It's the, it's the little one that we think, oh, but God wasn't really talking about that kind of lying. You know, a little white lie. Or if I asked you if you've ever lied, everyone should raise their hand. And if they don't, they're proving my point. <laughs> Right? Lying is the one. Has anyone here lied? Today. <laughs> we have a couple honest people. Look, look at that. You guys are going to heaven for sure. <laughs> because, let's look at statistics on this, right? The psychiatrists and psychologists have been studying this thing, right? Let's see what we think. By the age of four, 90% of children have learned the concept of lying. I think they're 10% short on that one. I think all kids. Based on studies performed in the past, it is estimated that 60% of adults, listen to this, 60% of adults cannot have a 10-minute conversation without lying at least once. 60% of adults. There's about 35, 40 of us here today. All right. That's probably, I don't know, I'll do the math. That's 60% of that. <laughs> You know, it's probably eight to ten of us here, maybe, have a hard time having a conversation without lying. And I'm thinking, who's the one doing most of the talking tonight? <laughs> it's me. Anyone want ice, ice cream, anybody? <laughs> Within those ten minutes, an average of three lies were told. Three. Who gets lied to the most? Who do you think? Spouse, spouses were fourth, in the top four. So they're they're fourth. But sixty nine percent of spouses get lied to. What's the number one category? Yes. Parents. Okay, bosses isn't on this in the top four. It's parents, friends. Parents eighty six percent, friends at seventy five percent, siblings at seventy three percent, and spouses at sixty nine percent. Where do you think most lies are seen? <laughs> Zing! Thomas gets the award for the zinger tonight, so. Where, where else? CVs. 40% of CVs have lies on them. Now, we're not talking like, you know, I went to Oxford and, you know, not those kind of lies, little, little ones. Yeah. Dating sites, 90% of dating sites and dating profiles have some kind of, okay, we won't call them lies, we'll call them aberrations of truth, okay? Little bendy things like, okay, I, I know I said I weighed, uh, you know, 12 stone and I weigh 20, you know, but I, I used to weigh 12 stone, so it's not really a lie. On my driver's license, it says, you know, that's how much I weigh or whatever it might be. Um, but little lies, like, you know, my hair used to have color, 
<laughs> and yeah, I showed you my picture from eight years ago or whatever, you know, dating sites, loads of, of lies on there. Everyday living, everyday lying. 12% of adults admit to telling a lie often or sometimes. 80% of women admit to telling harmless half-truths occasionally. I'm sure that's how they, they structure it. I don't tell lies. I tell harmless half-truths, okay? No finger pointing back there, okay? 31% of people admit to lying on their CVs. 13% of patients lie to their doctors. 32% of patients stretch the truth to their doctor. It's funny because... There's a 13% say they lie and 32% say they stretch the truth. So there's a few people that have a hard time saying that they lie. Well, don't lie, just stretch the truth a little bit. Six lies are told daily by men to their partner, boss, or colleagues. Three lies are told daily by women to their partner, boss, or colleagues. So men, we lie twice as often as women do. And all the women said... <laughs> One woman said it, Chris. We'll have, to, we'll have to book some counseling time, I, you know. This is going to be a fun night, I can tell. <laughs> Lying is considered more common among phone calls than face-to-face -face chats. Has any one of you ever taken a phone call and you're like, oh, oh someone's at the door. I got to go. Sorry. You know, <laughs> click. Whew. And then you're off to whatever you were before you lied about it. One lie in every seven is discovered as far as liars can tell. Okay. So of all of, of every seven lies, one is discovered. A tenth of lies are just exaggerations, and 60% of lies were outright deceptions. Okay? 70% of liars claim they would tell their lies again. And people on average tell an average of 11 lies a week. So there's a lot. We, it's, it's in us to be deceitful. And, and I know that's a hard word, and I want you to... I want you to submit yourself to this concept because we often exclude ourselves from certain teaching because we think, I don't lie. If I asked how many people here lie, very few of you, in fact I did, only a couple of you raised your hands and everyone else was like, no, I'm a right, fine upstanding, holy Christian, son of God, daughter of God, I never lie. But if I said, how many of you stretch the truth every now and then, well, maybe a few more hands would go up. And you know what? It's the same. Now we could do, I could do a teaching on on you know certain kinds of lies I, I could do a teaching and it's a valid teaching you know the, the question always comes up is it wrong to lie for someone in world war ii germany to lie about the jews that were hiding in their their attic you know is that wrong well that's that's a whole other concept okay we're not talking about that but we're talking just in general all of us submit yourself tonight to this because all of us give in to the temptation more than we will admit that we like to stretch the truth or bend the truth every now and then. Let's talk about why we lie. Number one, we lie to save face. And I have some pictures to go along with, um, with each one of these. If you can go up to that first picture that I have in that. We lie to save face. I don't know if you're familiar with this fella. He was uh, our president uh, for eight years in the United States. Moderately good in some areas, moderately bad in other areas. He was known for lying, okay, and about what he lied about, okay, which we're not going to get into tonight. Woo! <laughs> but he lied. In fact, this still is taken from the speech that he gave. When he said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, he was wagging that finger and come to find out he did, he admitted to it. But he was lying because he's president of the United States and he wanted to save face. You ever lied to save face? Hmm, let me ask you a few more questions. Someone says, why were you late? Oh, traffic on the M4 was horrible. Really? You know? Yeah, there was an accident or whatever. No, you just, you wanted to finish your episode of whatever it was you were watching on Netflix, and then you wanted to get in and go to whatever appointment you had, right? You know? Uh, or this one, I love this one. This happens to us, because you know you have guests over, and you, and you, and you uh, well, we're not ready for that one yet. Not yet. Stole my, stole my thunder there. You have someone come over to the house, and you, what do you do? You, you, Misty's great at this. She, she's like a hurricane going through the house, and in five minutes, it's spotless. Now, we don't know where everything goes to, and you have to be careful, you know, but she's, she's really good at doing that. 
But then, I mean, the house is spotless and someone comes over and you say something like, oh, sorry, the house is a wreck. <laughs> you know, after you just cleaned it to make, make it seem like you are ultra orderly and with it. You know, like you know, they say, well, if they think this is, is a wreck, man, they must really have their lives together. Sometimes we, we lie to make ourselves look a little better than we actually are. And these are the kind of lies that, you know, really catch us up and the temptations that are there. Now you can go to the next one. We lie to shift blame. Now, if you have children, you are familiar with this scenario, very much so. <laughs> the blue crayon pointing at his little brother, the red crayon, saying he did it when all the writing is in blue. I don't know how many times, usually with Will, uh, he would have, he'd have his face covered in chocolate. Will, were you eating chocolate? <laughs> really? Tell me the truth. You were eating chocolate, weren't you? Uh, how'd you know? Well, it's, it's written on your face, pal. It's written all over your face. Sometimes we lie to shift blame, uh, if, especially with siblings. This is a big one because we have learned, children learn that if they can get away with things, um, or they can get away with things a lot more often if they can shift the blame to their sibling, right? Um, there's a, a cartoon strip in America called um, The Family Circus, and they had this running thing. You know, it was like a one-panel comic strip, and the parents were wanting to know, well, who broke the lamp? And all the kids are running in different directions, and they all say the same thing. Not me. And so the writer of this comic strip invented this little ghost of a character called Not Me. And every family has this little <clears throat> invisible character called Not Me that knocks over the lamps, that, you know, was supposed to take out the trash, the, the rubbish, but didn't. I mean, all these little things, we shift blame. Not me. It wasn't me. Or here's one. Uh, we lie sometimes to shift blame. We, we don't always blame it on another person. We might blame it on another thing. Oh, I said that? Oh, that was the alcohol talking, you know. Whereas it may have been, you may not have said those things had you not been under the influence of alcohol. What were you looking at Glenn for? <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to take the blame. We don't want to take responsibility for things. Out of us, we may not be tempted to lie to save face or lie to shift blame, but I think we might bend the truth a little bit in order to avoid confrontation. Here's a famous line. It, it's not you, it's me. You know, that's a classic breakup line when really you're just sick of hanging out with this person and their voice annoys you and their laugh annoys you and they eat too much when you're paying for dinner and you don't want to be their boyfriend anymore. I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> but you sit down and you don't want to hurt their feelings and so you say, it's not you, it's, it's all me. I've, I've got things, I've got turmoil, I'm crazy, and I, I just, it's, it's all me. You know, because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Or, or this one, this, this wives, this is a big one for you. Ready? No, 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 no. It, it's okay. Lie. It is not okay. Hun, are we okay? Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's okay. Sometimes we can tell. It's fine. That we understand. I can understand that one, but it's the subtle ones. No, 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 no. It's, it's okay. It's okay. When it's not okay. Sometimes we need conflict. Sometimes we need to communicate when things are not okay. Because what happens is they build up and they build up and build up. And then the relationship falls apart. <coughs> and it would have been better had we not bent the truth a little bit when someone asks, are you okay? And we say, yeah, I'm okay. Sometimes it's not always in relationships though. I've asked people before that I know are going through hard times. And I say, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I think that's probably one of the biggest lies that Christians tell themselves ever. I'm okay when you're not. If we are not okay, we need the truth to come in. How can the truth set us free when we're not admitting to the thing that's binding us? I'm struggling in this area of my life. I need help in this area of living. My wife and I are hurting. My job is on the line, whatever it might be. That's what the church is for. That's what we are here for. Each other is to support each other. And if you're lying to yourself, we cannot 
embrace truth together because you want to avoid conflict. You want to avoid having those conversations, those difficult conversations. Or how about this one? When talking about politics, you know, you knew, of course, uh, Thomas was the first to bring it up, but you knew we we're going to have, we're going to be talking about lying. Politics is going to come up. But we lie to avoid confrontation when it comes to politics. You know, someone that, who's a little more outspoken than us will come up and they'll say, ah, oh, that, that Jeremy Corbyn and blah, 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 blah. And you're, and you're like, you, you just don't want to get into it. So what do you do? You say, yeah, Jeremy Corbyn. Or flip it around. It might be Boris Johnson or, or whoever it might be. Fill in the blank with your chosen political persuasion. But we, we, we just aren't in the mood for a confrontation. So we're just like, yeah. So we lie a little bit. Interesting story. In the 1982... Um, elections for governor of the state of California in America. There was a, a man uh, named Tom Bradley, who was the former mayor of Los Angeles. He was running. He was the Democratic candidate for governor of the state of California. He was an African-American man. And um, he was running against Republican George Duke Magian. And the polls predicted that Bradley was going to win. They went house to house and they asked, are you going to vote for Bradley? People would say yes. And so this is big news because they're like, well, hey, be watching this because this could be the first black governor in the United States, in the history of the United States. This is going to be huge. Well, Tom Bradley <clears throat> lost. And Duke Magian won. And people were like, what's going on? All the polls, all the people we asked. Sociologists think that people were supportive of the other candidate but didn't want to be seen as racist so they said, well, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Tom Bradley. And they call it now, they still call it the Bradley effect, where people will say one thing. It may not be about race, but it may be about something else. They call it the Bradley effect, where when asked person to person about who they're going to vote for or whatever, they will say something to avoid conflict. They will lie, in, a, in essence. Now, let's pause here for a second, because I don't want us to get the idea, you know, yes, any kind of lie will separate us from God. I don't want you to, you know, go home thinking, well, you know, I'm just condemned to hell because I, I want to avoid conflict. Okay, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But I want you to understand all this so we can submit ourselves to this concept of falsehood. It's for all of us. None of us are okay here. We all have some culpability when it comes to bending the truth a little bit. Uh, two more reasons why we lie. The next picture here is we lie to be nice. I love your shoes. Your hair looks great. Women lie to make others feel better. I know it's not just women, but that was what the picture said. It was a fun picture. To be nice. But I will say this, ladies. Women are notorious for this. Why? Because they are nice and don't want to hurt feelings. If you see someone, a sister or a friend, or a colleague, and their shoes just absolutely don't match whatever else they're wearing. You know, some of you may not be, I'm, I'm using a, a broad example, but hey, do you like my shoes? And inside you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, those are combat boots, or whatever it is. And, and you don't say that, but, but this is what you do say, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're great, no, they're cute. Cute is, a, I think, a word that ladies use when they don't want to be truthful. Oh, that's cute, oh, you know? Men don't care. Hey, you like my shoes? First of all, they weren't looking at your shoes. They're like, no, oh, whatever, you know. You're wearing combat boots with a dress. <laughs> and that's my brother, you know, whatever it is. But guys will usually tell you, it's like, dude, who cut your hair? You know, you need to go back. Get your money back or whatever it is. You know, we, we're less likely to lie to, to, to save someone's feelings. We don't care about other people's feelings. But think about this scenario, okay? Here's another scenario where we lie to be nice. Your neighbors have been at your house for dinner. Dinner was at 6. It's now 11.30. Your guests say something like, Oh, it's late, but we just love talking with you. You probably want to go to bed. Now, some people's wives, maybe mine, will say... <laughs> No, we're night owls anyway. <laughs> I will say, yep, we want to go to bed. 
you know, because that's just the differences. And I'm not saying because I'm virtuous and I don't lie. I'm just saying I don't think about other people's feelings as much as Misty does. She gets frustrated with me. We, this used to happen. We were working with, with university students. They'd come over and they would stay till 2, 3 in the morning. You know, and when we're 27, 28, that's not a, a huge deal, but we started having kids. It got to a point where I would say, make sure you lock the door on your way out. We're going to bed, you know. But sometimes it's like, no, 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 stay, stay longer. <laughs> Bent the truth a little bit. You ever been there? Have someone that's maybe overstaying their welcome a little bit? Last reason we lie is to make yourself feel better. Next picture. It's not denial. I'm just very selective about the reality I accept. <laughs> Sometimes we lie to make ourselves feel better, otherwise known as denial, when we lie to ourselves. It's only a few pounds. <laughs> Who hasn't said that, you know? I'm only human. Every family has their issues, you know? When all these things are things that we need to deal with. Either we're not healthy and we need to address that, or, you know, we have some vice that we need to correct and we say well i'm only human you know everyone deals with it or something yeah maybe but not really you still need to deal with this you're in denial that this is taking this is taking control of your life this is hurting your health it is shortening your your lifespan it is tearing your family apart denial when we lie to ourselves to make ourselves feel better well, let's look at what god says about lying in short, God hates it. Proverbs 6 says this, There are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to Him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. How many are there? Seven? Do you ever wonder why he says six and then he changes his mind to seven? There's actually six, but one he mentions twice. Which one is it? Lying. In verse 17, he says a lying tongue. And in verse 19, it says he hates a false witness who utters lies. Proverbs 12, 19 says, Truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. In verse 22, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are His delight. But why? Why is God against lying? I mean, we've already established some lies are big, some lies are small, some lies are bad, some lies might be good. You can make the argument for it. Some lies are not that big of a deal. I think that's the biggest justification we make is, oh, it's not that big of a deal. But why does God hate lying? Well, firstly, the concept of falsehood is the genesis of so many ills in our society. The concept of untruth is the beginning of so many problems in our culture today. Number one, confusion. Lying begets confusion. It begets poverty. It begets regret, it begets violence, it begets crime. And you might be thinking, how does lying, lying beget all these things? Well, I'm glad you asked. The concept of falsehood is the genesis. The act of falsehood, lying, leads people to these places. When people misrepresent the truth, they lead people to these places. I'll give you some examples. I was told that adultery is a victimless crime. Now my family is a wreck. I was told that this business plan was foolproof, and now I'm bankrupt. I was told that looking out for number one was the way to go, and now I'm old and have no friends, family, or happiness. I was told there is no God, and now I'm standing before Him. I was told a lie, and look where it has led. <clears throat> God desires truth because truth is what is real. Let me address something that we need to be very careful about today. There is this concept of subjective truth that is in our culture, it's rampant. And what I mean by subjective, if something is objective, it's 
the same for everyone, no matter how they experience it. Okay. If something is subjective, well, my experience with that is subject to my outlook or how someone sees that is subject to whatever, however their experience is. Okay. Like temperature, whether something is hot or cold is subjective. All right. Um, a flame being hot is objective. You see the difference there? Truth is objective. Some people may, may say, well, this is my truth. This is your truth. And we're just going to have to agree to disagree. All right. Our experiences may be different and I understand where that's coming. But when we're coming to objective uh, concepts, like the flame is hot. Well, my truth is that the flame is not hot. Well, your truth can be whatever it is. You can say that it's not hot, but when you stick your hand in it, it's going to burn. Truth is full stop. I've said that before. That's my thing. Truth is full stop. Truth is what is. Or another way to say it, truth is what is real. I can say that my truth is that I can run out there into the street, spread my arms and take off like Superman. All right. If I do that, I'm going to come back in here with a scraped face <laughs> because I'm not going to be able to fly. Even though my truth said it, the truth was my arms are not built to take me into the sky, no matter how hard I flap them. Truth is because truth is what is real. And that's what God desires. He wants us to live in reality because we can't deal with reality until we recognize what reality is. If you have cancer in your body, you cannot effectively treat it until you recognize that there is cancer in your body. Does that make sense? Yeah. Beware of lying, lying to others. God wants us to be bringers of truth. Be a source of reality to your friends. And do it gently. Don't, don't be like, like the person that, that said, you know, who cut your hair? It's really bad. Go get your money back. All right. Be gentle with truth and maybe just don't say anything. You ever heard the thing? If you can't say anything nice, say it louder. <laughs> if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. But when it comes to the important things, be a bringer of truth, be a source of reality to your friends. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians chapter four. Verse 17 and following, he says, So this I say and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their minds, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness and truth. Therefore, here it is, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you with his neighbors, for we are members of one another. Did you catch that last bit? We are members of one another. If you lie to your brother or sister, you lie to yourself. We need to be looking after each other. If my arm is at war with my leg, I got problems. You think, well, you say that's ridiculous. You know, you know someone that's ever had an organ transplant? They have to take drugs for the rest of their lives so that their body does not reject the organ. All right. Sometimes that's what we in the body do. We, we, we say things <clears throat> to people that hurts them, or we don't say things to people that might help them. And Paul is saying that's like the body rejecting part of itself. We need to be speakers of truth to one another. So don't lie to others. Don't lie to yourself. If you live in denial, it will only lead to regret. If you can't be true to yourself, you can't have true joy. And beware of <clears throat> this word, rationalization. When it comes to being honest with yourself, maybe it's with your, with your GP, maybe that you need to be honest with your GP so that you can get some real treatment for whatever it is that's causing issues. Maybe it's a spiritual issue that you're not being honest with yourself about. Don't rationalize your way out of it. Well, everyone deals with this, or it's just a little thing, or whatever it might be. Deal with it. Don't be in denial. Consider David. Remember the story when David was confronted by the prophet uh, Nathan? David had committed this egregious sin 
Not only did he sleep with another man's wife, but he arranged for her husband to be killed in battle to, to cover up his sin. And you remember the prophet Nathan confronted him and told him a story. He said, let me tell you a story about a man who owned hundreds of sheep, hundreds of lambs. And there was another man that owned one lamb. And this lamb was his favorite. It was like a, a child. He loved that lamb and he nurtured that lamb and he gave everything for that lamb. Well, a man who had hundreds of lambs took that man's one ewe lamb, slaughtered it for a meal. And David said, oh, let me at this man. Let me at him. You know, he shouldn't have done that. And Nathan said, you are that man. You are living in denial. You're thinking it's okay. You have access to all the women in the world. You're so powerful, and yet you took this man's wife. You've been in denial. Sometimes we need a Nathan moment when we're dealing with God for someone to say, you need to, you need to deal with reality, brother. You need to face the truth, sister, because your spirit is suffering. So don't lie to each other. Don't lie to yourself. And finally, don't lie to God. You ever lied to God? Oh, never. Really? I pray. You ever say that to God? Or say that to someone else? Oh, I pray. But really we don't. We don't spend time talking with our Lord. We might say a few words here and there, but we don't spend time talking and communicating and communing with him. Or we say this one, I'll never do it again, Lord. You know what? If we have a sin that keeps popping up in our lives, God knows that you're going to do it again. And for you to say, I'm never going to do it, most often is a lie. Instead, we should address it this way. Lord, give me the strength to never cross you again, to never fail you again. Lord, give me the strength to walk and not fall in this area in my life. Okay? Be honest with God, because if you're not honest with God, you're not going to get things right in your life. Or how about this one? You ever said this lie? I love you, Jesus. Now you might be thinking, where did that come from? I really mean that when I say that. I'm sure you do, and I've, I do too, but here's where I have failed in this area. Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So we may have the sentiment of love, but if we're not following the words of Christ, we are not being truthful with him. Brothers and sisters, let's come to the Lord tonight and confess that we have not been truthful. And I don't mean this as, as um, a condemnation. I don't want us to walk away feeling like we've been <laughs> whipped. I don't want us to walk away thinking that, oh my gosh, I just feel horrible. I don't want us to walk away that way. I want us to be encouraged because all, that's how we deal with things. De say, I, I lie. Sometimes I'm not truthful in my life and in my circumstances. That's what God wants us to do. That's what repentance is. Do you realize that? God wants us to repent before we can be saved. All repentance is is saying, yep, yeah, you're right, Lord. I have I've sinned. We can't deal with our sin until we are truthful with it, even if it's small. So tonight, let's commit to be truthful with each other, with ourselves, and with God. We're going to um, take a few moments just to respond to this. I, I want us to bow our heads and have a moment with the Lord.